Well, good morning, good morning. Find a nice, comfortable seat and we'll get started. We have several things we need to get done this morning. So we want to make sure that everybody's where they can pay attention. Remember, not forget. Um, let me, we have the calendars for next year. They're back on either side over here or out on the kiosk. Make sure you pick one up. And then also we have a pin that goes with this calendar and the pins are in the basket next to the calendars. And you've got to have this pin because that's the only thing that'll write on this calendar. No, that's not true. But, but we got enough pins and calendars for everybody, so make sure that you pick one of those up. We also have, back there on the back tables, tracks, Christmas tracks. Uh, both of them here. And um, you might want to pick some of those up and put them in your Christmas cards to somebody that you want to uh, wish Merry Christmas or have the gospel. So these are also back there. So there's plenty of things back there. Also the newsletter. The newsletter for um, this next month is there also. Let's go ahead and have the choir start.
for your faithful giving, and I want to remind you that nobody knows what you give except you and the Lord, and Letha does keep track for tax purposes, but uh, it's, it doesn't go anywhere else. Nobody knows what you give. It's between you and the Lord, and so you talk to him about, about it. Let me make a couple of other announcements. Tonight's service is at 6 o'clock. We're going to talk tonight about uh, temptation and why does God allow temptation? Why does he allow you to be tempted? So I encourage you to come tonight at, at 6. We're not having Wednesday night service this week, but there are a lot of other activities. I trust that you'll uh, follow them in your bulletin. We don't have the Christmas card boxes out yet. We decided to wait on the um, putting up our Christmas decorations for a little while. And uh, we'll get those. They'll be up by next Sunday. Choir practice tonight? Yeah, choir practice tonight is at 4.30. Uh, cantata is next Sunday morning. So at 9 o'clock Sunday morning, all the adults will be over in the fellowship hall. We'll have some coffee and donuts there. And then at 10 o'clock will be the cantata. The orchestra will be doing their concert the week after on Sunday night. So a lot of things happening. Let's have a word of prayer, and then Kevin will come and lead us in some music. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for how you blessed us. The various things that go on in this church, uh, thank you for the faithfulness of the people in their service, in their giving, in their prayers. Thank you for all of that. And as we go through this service today, may we just honor and glorify you in all things said and done. We do pray for the Cruz family at this time and give them the comfort and peace that they need. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's, uh, remember the song that we learned last week, His Mercy is More? We're going to do that again to start with, actually, this morning. Uh, before we get into our regular song service. And we're going to keep learning this, a uh, really good song. Uh, we're going to start off with the, the chorus, and then go right into uh, verses, and join me on the chorus when we get there.
<coughs> they have here written in the bulletin, which is very good. I would pray for our missionaries. And I trust that you will look this over and consider it very, very seriously. This isn't just something casually that is put in here. And let me, let me tell you of two experiences along this line that happened. One with our missionaries in Brazil. Uh, one of the missionaries lived in a house where they had a <coughs> cement and it went down and they were able to drive the car through there so it was covered. And one day he didn't realize it, but their little baby had crawled out, crawled out down there and had gotten out of the car. And he ran out of the baby. We have heard of different things happening like this in many different parts of the country for missionaries. So these are very, very serious things that can happen, not normally here, but can happen also. Another one was a missionary was insisting on uh, something in his town and that it was important. And we had been told when we first went to Brazil, when I was a missionary there, that don't sit with your back to a window. And that sounds very strange, but that was because there is always that danger. And in this one town, in this one missionary, young missionary, was shot because he was preaching and teaching the gospel there and they didn't like it. Now he wasn't killed. But these things happen. So when it says here, missionaries often face various forms and levels of suffering in their work, uh, some are unthinkable almost, but I mention these things so that you will realize that your part in praying has a great deal with the work of the Lord overseas in these missionaries' lives. And along with this is your is your our giving because the for the reason that you have given, there are missionaries in all different parts of the world from our church, from what you have given, so that they can hear the gospel and receive it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so very much for the privileges that you have given to us that we can give to you and that giving can last for eternity because it goes towards your work and goes towards what you want to be accomplished even in this church. And we thank you so much for all these missionaries that have been given support by this church and they are out there in many different countries in Chile and in, uh, all in Africa and other parts of the world as they tell about you we would just pray that you will help them to be faithful in giving out your words that, that many many people might come to know you Lord help us to be faithful to you here and giving to your work here and for missions and we give you praise for the privilege in Jesus' name.
song touch you? <laughs> we um, one one other correction on announcements on the uh, season saints. Your flyer says the fourteenth. It's the twelfth. So make sure that you get that changed. All right, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. You can be seated as, we, as I read this one verse. Uh, this being the week, uh, week of Thanksgiving, I wanted to do a lesson, message on thanks, giving thanks. And so Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as we come this morning. We thank you for all that we've already participated in, the things that we've been able to be a part of. And we pray now as we go through this lesson that we'll remember that you are the one who provides, takes care, sustains. Thank you for that. And may we, behave, we have thankful hearts during this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, there are three possible attitudes when you think about giving thanks. The first one is called practical atheism. Practical atheism. That's thinking that you deserve everything that you, you have, every good thing that you have, and even more. It's like the rich farmer in Scripture who looked at everything he had and was thankful for what was he believed because of his hard work, his ingenuity, had gotten him all of this. And he had no thought of giving thanks to God. And the truth of the matter is that the farmer could no more protect his possessions by his own power than he had produced them by his own power. And God said to the man in Luke chapter 12 and verse 20, You fool, tonight you will die, and then who will own what you have accomplished? Tonight you will die, and who will own all that you think that you've accomplished and done? That's not having the feeling, the need to thank God. And that's much worse than ingratitude. Because it's simply unbelief. That's why we call it atheism. We have a very materialistic society today that is bent on a very humanistic philosophy that has no thought of thanking God. Look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. Look at all that, that I have done. Well, there's a second prevailing attitude in giving thanks, and that's the, of the hypocrite. In Luke chapter 18, it tells, Jesus tells of a man who was praying. And he praised himself. God, I thank thee, I'm not like other people, swindlers and unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I get. And although this man used God's name, he was really praying to himself and for himself. And the only reason he used God's name was to call further attention to this false piety that he had. Because God had no part in his life. I mean, it was... And the prayer, it was just totally worthless. His prayer of thanksgiving was hypocritical. It was a sham. It was pretense. But then there's that third attitude of thanksgiving. That person that is truly thankful. You remember that one leper of the ten Jesus healed? He returned and was truly thankful to Jesus. When you are thankful for what you have because you know you don't deserve it, it's all entirely because of God's grace and what God, bringing God glory, we thank Him for that. There's this medieval legend. It tells of these two angels that were sent to the earth by God. And they were to gather the prayers of the saints. And one was to gather the petitions, the prayer request. And the other was to gather the prayers of thanksgiving. So one the request, one thanksgiving. The angel that was responsible for the prayer of petitions, of what people were praying they wanted, he wasn't able to carry him back, back in one load. The other one carried the prayer of thanksgiving back in one hand. You think about our prayer life. How do we, what does it entail? What do we pray for? How do we pray? That legend is developed from the sad fact that God's children are more prone to ask than to thank. To ask than to thank. Someone once said that when a prayer person prays without thanksgiving, he has really clipped the wings of that prayer so that it cannot rise. And how we need to be thankful. In our text this morning, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20 tells us that when 
for what, and to whom the Spirit-filled believer is to be thankful. Are you thankful this morning? Let's look at a couple of things. When are we to be thankful? Always. Always. To be thankful always is to recognize that God is in control of our life, every detail. He wants to conform us to the image of His Son. So He's working in our life. And to be thankless is to disregard God's control, Christ's leadership, the Holy Spirit's filling. And we're not, we don't even think about those things. We think about what we've accomplished, what we've done, what we've achieved. The Bible says nothing must grieve the Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes by us not giving thanks, we are grieving the Holy Spirit. How we need to be thankful. Even when God brings trials and difficulties into our lives, we complain, we grumble, we question God's wisdom, God's love, His sovereignty. We question all of those things. We're going to discuss that tonight at our 6 o'clock service. But there are three levels of thanks, thankfulness this morning. Number one, when we are blessed. When you're blessed. Somebody's been looking for a job and finally they get a job and they're able to work and so forth. Wow, God has blessed me with a job. Well, even we this morning, we live in a country where we have the economics that we have, the ability to go out and to achieve and to do things, the freedom we have. We have the freedom to go all across the United States, anywhere we want to go, to go to any church we want to go, to do a lot of the things, live where we want to live. We have those. We need to be thankful. You've been delivered from an illness. Be thankful. Reconciliation with somebody that you love. Be thankful. And it's so easy to be thankful then. God, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of that that you've given me. But there's a second level of that, of being grateful. That's for the hope of blessing and victory that is yet to come. We are anticipating God's intervention. We know that God intervenes in our life. We know that God knows our tomorrows and then on. And sometimes it's harder to thank God for the job before you have the job. Thank God that He's going to take care of you. You have a need this morning. You're looking for something. Instead of being depressed and discouraged, thank God that He's going to meet that need. Because He will. If you haven't been delivered from something, we need to be thankful. And God will take care of that. For reconciliation, if a, a relationship cannot be restored or reconciled, it almost seems impossible. Pray. Pray for that person and thank God that He's going to work in your life. And you know, this requires more faith, more spiritual maturity, realizing, understanding that God knows your tomorrows. That is where faith and hope begins. Because faith and hope is believing in the unseen, something that you've not experienced yet. But you know that God really cares, and He wants to take care of it. That level says, I know God's in control. I know that God will walk with me every step of the way. I will be with Him, and He will deliver me in His time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a third level. This is thanking God in the midst of the battle. That's tough. Thanking God in the midst of the battle. While you're undergoing some kind of test, trouble, difficulty. Maybe it even looks like you're, you're, you're failing. You're just totally overwhelmed. God, can you thank Him then? I think to thank God in the midst of the pain and trials and persecution shows a level of maturity that few Christians seem to know. But you see, our Heavenly Father wants all of His children to have that. If you're going through a tough time, thank God for it. And again, tonight we're going to discuss why you go through those tough times. Why you go through those difficulties. Why God allows them in your life. Well, secondly this morning, for what are we to give thanks? Our text says, for all things. All things. Scripture is filled with things that we are to be thankful for. Psalm 30 verse 4 says we are to thank Him for who He is. Psalm 75, verse 1, we are to give Him thanks for His nearness. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, we are to give thanks for our salvation. 
The opportunity that he gives us to serve him. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Give thanks for your food, your clothing, your shelter, for the freedom that you have. Oh, I, I think sometimes we just get up in the morning and we get dressed and we sit down to a big breakfast and we eat that and we get in our cars and drive and we don't even stop to thank God for all that we have, for what he's given to us. We're to be thankful for the truth that you have in Christ. You see, it never changes. We can believe in the word of God. We can believe in the Bible. We can believe in Jesus Christ that he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is always with us. And we have that truth of assurance of our salvation. He that hath the Son hath life. These things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. You and I, we live this life with whatever it gives to us, whatever happens, knowing that one day when we die, we're going to be with Him for all eternity and all of those things that He has prepared for us. We have the truth of His protection. I'm his child, he is my father. And as my heavenly father and I his son, he's going to take care of me. He is going to protect me. We have the truth of his presence. I will be with you always. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll go with you every step of the way. Whether you're, it doesn't matter where you're at, at work, at home, in the store, it doesn't matter. God is with you. Can't you just stop and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The greatest, we, greatest gift we can give to God is a grateful heart. We give him the recognition of what he has done for us, salvation, what he is doing for us each and every day, and what he's going to do for us. The Bible says, and we, it's, sometimes it's hard for, under, for us to understand this, that God causes us all things that happen in our life to work for our own good. To work for our own good. Can we see and understand God's wisdom in dealing with even the difficult things in our life? I don't know what you're going through this morning, and maybe there's something really difficult. But God's He's handling it. He's dealing with it. And he wants us, the ultimate goal is for us to give him glory. And that's in thanksgiving. To glorify God is to thank him. No matter how much you hurt, how disappointed you might be, maybe the things you fail to understand. Because we are to give God thankfulness for his goodness, his love, his grace, his mercy. All of those things, the salvation, the blessings that he gives us every day. As you go out throughout this day, you're going to receive God's blessing. You're going to enjoy God's blessing. It's all there. I think what happens is pride gets in the way. Pride gets in the way and it tells us that our job, our spouse, our health, and most of what we have is because we deserve it. I've worked hard. We deserve it. Third, how are we to be thankful? Again, our verse says, in the name of Jesus. To give thanks in his name. To be consistent of who he is. And what he has done. Be thankful. Apart from Christ, all things don't turn out to work for good. Because of Jesus Christ, the good and the bad, they all play a part in God's conforming us to be like his son. He wants us to be like Christ, Christian, like Christ. And so the things that he allows to come into our life are conforming us, are chiseling away at the stuff that we don't need so that we can be more like Christ. You think about people who do not have, who are not Christians. They don't have Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for them. We do. We do. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father and making intercession for you and I. And so when you say your prayer, and whatever your prayer is all about, you conclude your prayer by saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Because He knows. He knows exactly what you need. 
It's because of Him you are who you are. It's because of Him you have what you have. Jesus Christ. Here's an interesting thought. We become thankful as Christ Himself is thankful. While Jesus walked this earth, He gave thanks in all things. I mean, He deserved glory, but He received humiliation. He deserved love, but He received hate. He deserved honor, but He was dishonored. He deserved praise, but He was scorned. He deserved riches, but He lived in poverty. He deserved holiness, but was made sin on our behalf. And yet the whole time, Jesus never lost His thankfulness to His Heavenly Father. Praising God. The Bible says that Jesus emptied Himself to the point of giving His own life. Of giving His own life. And because of that, He is able to fill us with everything of which He emptied Himself, including life. You and I, the only reason that we can have eternal life is because Jesus gave His life. Can't we be thankful for that? And then last, whom are we to be thankful to? God the Father. God the Father. Jesus thanked His Father. We need to thank the Father. And we need to thank the Heavenly Father, and we can do that in several ways. With our voices. This morning you sang songs of praise. You were thanking God for that. You need to sing that, but not just in church. While you're driving in the car, while you're at home. Maybe you don't want anybody to hear you, so while you're in the shower or something. How about praying in public? What if you're in a restaurant and your food is brought to you and there are people all around you and you know they're watching you because they want to see what you ordered? Can you stop and pray? Would you bow your heads and hold your hands with the people around you and pray? I mean, it doesn't have to be a you know, really loud prayer, but a prayer. They know you're praying. Praying at home before you get your meal. What happens is at home is the mom says dinner is ready and everybody picks up a plate and goes to their rooms or wherever. No prayer for the meal. Family devotions. A time when you get together and just pray. But we also need to thank our Heavenly Father with our hands. We've been going through a series now of teaching of the gifts. And the reason we want you to realize your gift is so that you can use it in the different areas of ministry. Teaching, ushering, our share ministry, working in the nursery, just doing something with what God has blessed you with. That's how you thank Him, by serving Him. So physical labor, those kinds of things. You're thanking God. And then with your heart. Because you see, thanksgiving is really an attitude. How many times has somebody said thank you and really didn't even mean it, they just thought they had to say it? Oh, can we say it with our heart, an attitude? You see, the source of any gift that you have is God. James chapter 1 and verse 17 says, He is the giver of every good thing, the bestower of every perfect gift. It is God who has blessed you. How can you thank anyone above God for what you have? Especially self. How God's going to use other people to benefit us, they're sure. And we need to thank them for letting God, for them allowing God to use them to give to you, but ultimately we thank God. If we don't acknowledge that God is the true source, we've not done anything else in thanking others. It's just kind of a flattery type of thing. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7 says that we need to be overflowing with gratitude for the people that He's put in your life. Thank Him for that. For the things that God has given you even for the adversity, for the work that He's doing in you, for the Holy Spirit, for the Son of God, for Jesus Christ, God who is the author and finisher of our faith. Oh, folks, we have so much to be thankful. Turn your, your outlines over, and I've put a little poem in there that I think speaks to us. Oh, 
Look at that little poem. It says, be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there to be looking forward to? Be thankful when you don't know something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times. During those times you grow. Be thankful for your limitations because they give you opportunities for improvement. Be thankful for each new challenge because it will build your strength and character. Be thankful for your mistakes. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be thankful when you are tired and weary because it means you've made a difference. It's easy to be thankful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for the setbacks. Gratitude can take a, turn a negative into a positive. Find a way to be thankful for your troubles, and they can become your blessings. Father, we pray this morning that our hearts are thankful, and that we say so, maybe to other people, but mostly to you, and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for the eternal life. Thank you for this life and the good things that we have here for our church, for our friends, for our family. Thank you for all of that. And God, we need to realize and remember that it is you who gives. And so again, we say thank you. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing a verse or two of invitation this morning. And if you want to come to the altar and pray, come. Had some that went through the new members class. You may want to come and uh, join this morning. You come ahead and Steve will meet you here. But we are so thankful what God has done in our life. We need to praise him for that. Let's sing. graduates of our new members class and they were all faithful to be there and um, so we they want to join the church this morning have Bob and Shirley Ramsey right here Ray, our, now we've got Larry and Amy Conley and then Pat John back over there and Ray Cruz at the very end and uh, uh, we need a motion to accept them as they've come there's a motion and a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth all in favor say man as soon as we're dismissed, I want you to come by and just give them right hand to fellowship and say, we're looking forward um, to serving the Lord together. And I, I really, again, appreciate that. We will have another class after the first of the year, and there may be others who are looking to uh, want to become members. Don't forget, service tonight, no Wednesday night service, choir practice tonight at 530. Uh, the cantata is next Sunday. Steve, why don't you come and dismiss us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time you've given us today. Lord, we are so thankful. I pray that we can have Thanksgiving be thanks living in our lives every day of the year. We are so grateful for all your many blessings and all you've done for us, and especially giving yourself for us on that cross. Lord, we're thankful for those who have joined with us today. I pray that we will be a blessing to them as they have already been a blessing to us. May we grow together in the Lord together. But thank you for it all, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.